The simplest device that can measure the speed of wind is a wind meter board. The stronger the wind blows, the greater its pressure, the greater the board's deviation from the vertical. Another device used by meteorologists is a cup-type anemometer. The faster the wind blows, the faster the windmill rotates, and the device converts its rotations into wind speed. One can measure not only the speed of wind, but also the speed of a water flow using pressure force. A French engineer, Henri Pitot, wondered what speed a water flow had at the bottom of a river. How can the speed be measured? Pitot lowered a long curved glass tube into the water to a required depth. If the river wasn't flowing, the level of the water inside the tube would be the same as the level outside it. But the water flow pushes at the water in the curved end of the tube and creates extra pressure that buttresses the water inside the vertical part of the tube. To calculate this pressure, let's apply Bernoulli's principle that states that the sum of static pressure and dynamic pressure along a flow line remains the same. At the inlet of the tube, the speed of the water equals zero, so the dynamic pressure equals rho multiplied by square v divided by two. This excessive pressure is balanced up by hydrostatic pressure, which is rho gh. Thus, we find the dependence between the height, h, and speed, v. Isn't it a familiar formula? A body thrown vertically upwards with speed v would go up exactly to this height, since Bernoulli's principle is nothing other than energy conservation law for flowing water or gas. Let's measure the speed of water flowing out of a tap using Pitot's method. We use a glass gauge tube, connecting it to another thin tube, a tester, through a bend. We put the tester into the water flow and see that the water level in the gauge tube rises above the edge of the tester. Knowing the difference in levels, one can determine the speed of water right away. That's why the scale of the device is marked off in meters per second. Pedo tube installed on a plane or a helicopter works according to the same principle of measuring the pressure difference. The inlet pressure adds up from static air pressure and velocity pressure. These apertures in the tube's side are for measuring static pressure. Knowing the difference in pressures and the air density at particular height, one can calculate the craft speed in the air. This tube works according to exactly the same principle. It has a central aperture that has to be directed towards the oncoming flow and side apertures that are going to measure static air pressure. The tube is connected to a sensor that measures the difference in pressure and converts it into airflow speed. We switch on the air blower and gradually raise the airflow speed. At this point, it equals 15 meters per second. Let's move the tube closer to the nozzle. The airflow speed reaches 60 meters per second right at the outlet. It's more than 200 kilometers per hour. This is the speed of a true storm wind. 